Hey, how are you doing? Holmes here, and welcome back to some more Black Myth Wukong boss guide. Today, we are going to be taking on the Yellow Wind Sage boss, which is going to be the last boss of Chapter 2. And I'm going to be using the Wind Chime, or not the Wind Chime, the Wind Tamer here for this first fight. And that you can get from doing the side quest that's uh, in this chapter as you explore. So, yeah. I'm going to be showing off that first, uh, and then I'm going to show you guys what happens if you don't have the wind chime, which, you know, this boss is still beatable without the wind chime. So, this combo, you only have to dodge the first attack, and then the last attack when he does is, like, spear slam. This move, just dodge sideways, and then if you can get your last hit of your light combo in, go, go ahead and get it in. Uh, if you can't, then just get ready to dodge sideways because he's going to do a leg kick. That move right there, it's a little bit similar to the first one. This move right here, except for you, he was jumping up. Um, so all his attacks, you can dodge it by dodging sideways for the first phase here. And then there's a stab, I messed up here. And then there's the kick. If you have the stone stance equipped, you can use that to knock him down when he does that specific kick, okay? So the kick has to hit you, by the way. If it misses, it's not gonna knock him down. So for the first phase, highly recommend just keep close so he doesn't do any other attacks. And here, just stick to these three attacks. So here is going to be going into second phase. When you see this leg stomp, just keep back. And then he's going to do this like spear spin attack. Just stay away from that to avoid all that attack. And then he's going to come rushing in with like this thing right here. Just dodge sideways to avoid that. And then immediately he's going to do three swings. So he can dodge sideways to avoid that. This jumping attack and dodge sideways. And he's going to follow up with that spinning attack and dodge sideways. This one, after right after that, he's going to come in with a leg kick always use your stone stance to knock him down with that and then this you want to dodge back uh, all of your light attacks will like the last hit of your light attack will stagger him uh, in both phases so uh, just something to note sometimes like if he's like mid attack already it won't stagger but most of the time it will and I'm using the thrust stance here so once I get my three focus points I just use that to knock him down and here's the leg stomp again. I ended up dodging by reflex instead of using my stone stance. And then he can summon this giant bug thing, which you can just dodge sideways to avoid. You don't have to spend the mana to use your stone stance. Uh, just be careful because he usually does an attack after the giant bug thing lands, so get ready to dodge. Uh, here's that little rock stab thing with the ground explosion just stay away to avoid that that kick that he just did when he's running like that that's a grab so you can dodge it by keeping distance or you can dodge sideways to avoid that the grab does about like 50 percent damage or close to 50 percent maybe like 45 percent of uh of your overall health so yeah be careful with that and this move right here it shoots out like these spears so you can dodge that by dodging sideways uh, here's his little ground thing again. Same thing as is like the transition. He does like three spins. Uh, when he runs away like that, he's gonna come back with a quick swipe. So be careful. Uh, you can dodge into him to avoid that. Here's another bug thing again. Dodge sideways. Get ready to dodge again because he's doing some. Oh, he's actually going to third phase now. So when you hear him like talking and shouting like that, he's gonna get the Buddha head back. And then here is where the wind tamer comes into play here. If you have that unlocked, this third phase will be a lot easier. If not, you're gonna have to deal with a lot of like sandstorm stuff. Um, if you clear the sand, the sandstorm, you're pretty much like fighting first phase right here. So, yeah, I'll show you guys what happens if you don't have the the wind tamer. But basically, uh, you should be pretty close to dying, and just use your freezing uh, spells and your heavies to finish them off here. So yeah, uh, that's pretty much it for this version. So let's go ahead and jump on over to the version where you don't have the Wind Tamer. So this is going to be the version where I was fighting him without the Wind Tamer. And you can see he's still close to dying, but the ending gets pretty hectic here because this sandstorm is going to be around the arena at all times. And it's basically a grab. Like if you get... If, if your character touches that, it's gonna grab you. And he keeps doing this stupid, like, shockwave thing. He basically has a lot of AoEs here. So, yeah, you have to watch out for the sandstorm. You have to watch out for, like, the freaking spear wave thing that he sends out. 
Uh, and then most of his sweeps cover the entire arena because of how small it became due to the damn sandstorm. See, you have to constantly watch out for his attack, so you're doing a lot of dodging rather than attacking. So he, he can like use the Buddha head and then he can like do this all these teleporting attacks. Uh, which is more or less the same as like his regular teleporting attacks. It's just more like hectic, I guess, because you have to watch out for the tornado in the background. And the sandstorm around the arena, it's keep it's what makes the arena small here. So this is what makes it difficult. And especially because the boss when it attacks. Uh, it can go out of the sandstorm, unlike you. You're stuck in the sandstorm here. So, you really have to like time your attacks. Uh, when the Buddha head glows like that, it's basically just these shadow clone attacking from the boss. So, yeah, uh, it's still doable. It's just, I mean, if you want a challenge, an unfair challenge in my opinion, then go ahead, but... I don't know. It's pretty damn hectic. I'll show you guys the two end results uh, of my stats. It's more or less the same because I didn't really up do any upgrading between the two fights. So my stats is more or less the same. Except one's going to have the Wind Tamer and one's not going to have the Wind Tamer. So here's going to be the stats for the one with Wind Tamer first. So this is what happens when you defeat the boss. You get a new relic. Uh, I guess my level is a little higher for the first one. Which is like the entire fight I showed off. Um, due to having to do the side quest. That gave me a, a few more levels. So yeah. Uh, here's the relics that we got from the first chapter. Or the relic. Uh, pretty much have the same equip as all the other videos. If you guys didn't watch that. Uh, this is basically the Black Bear set. Uh, the end boss of chapter 1. And here's the Wind Tamer. So this is what allows you to clear the, the sandstorm as well as the tornado that keeps moving inside the arena. And these are the relics I... Oh, not relics. These are the accessories I'm running for the first fights. And then here are my stats, which... Or my skill trees, which I don't think it should have changed because I don't think I did any upgrading um, between the two. Okay, so here's gonna be the stats for the version where I didn't do the Wind Tamer side quest. So therefore, I don't have the Wind Tamer skill unlocked. So I'm two levels lower than the one where I did do the side quest. Uh, everything else is the same here, like equip-wise and skill-wise. The only difference is the level and I don't have the Wind Tamer skill. So when you get the Wind Tamer skill, you don't even have to add it. It's automatically, like, you'll have the skill to dispel the Sandstorm. So, uh, just a little FYI, I guess. But yeah, here are my skill trees uh, along with my equips. So it's pretty much the same. Uh, relics, the same. Equips here. And yeah. So for those of you guys, you know, that didn't do a side quest and are... <laughs> questioning if it's beatable it is it's just a real pain in the ass i'm not saying it's easy by all means i was fucking struggling that thing was like i, I, I don't know it was it was a pain in the ass <laughs> having to dodge all his like sweeps because it basically covered like the entire arena due to how small it became but anyways i'm rambling thank you all so very much for watching hopefully this video has helped if you're struggling against this boss and if it did hopefully i will stay tuned for more until next time hope to catch y'all later ohms oops.